Hey, so what is up? We are Welcome back. Back. Oh, so nice to be here. Is that our first hip hop intro? I was just, I was just song? wondering that. Also, it might be. It might be. That um, album brings me back to. I think it was junior, senior year of high school. I bought that. This is 1998. I saw when I found that song. 1998, the summer before my first year of college. 98. Wow, that was my freshman year of high school. Wow. Well, that ages me a little bit. <laughs> Hello. Hey, we're both yeah. in our 30s. We're both in our 30s. But yeah, the Beasties from New York City. And yeah, you will hear my New York City cut at the end of the night. You've been, you've really raised the bar these last couple of weeks. So, Ooh, uh, thank you. With your semisonics and what have you. <laughs> Nothing raises the bar like the semisonics. So what's new? Not a whole lot. I got a haircut. Yeah. Speaking of music, the soundtrack during the haircut was all 90s one-hit wonders. Uh, Wallflowers, oh. OMC, How Bizarre, Kiss Me, Beneath the Burn Barley, or whatever that song was. Sixpence uh, None the Richer. Yeah, Sixpence None the Richer. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Is good. Is this a... Is this the place you always go to get your hair cut? Do you have a place I always go? Yeah. Kaboom! Shout out to Kaboom! They're big ed tech fans over there. <laughs> always got nineties, nineties, nineties uh, pop one hit wonders in the background. Yeah, but they played Semi Sonic Closing Time, which is what made it pop into my head. <laughs> there you go. It's and of course, cool. Marcy Playground, Sex and Candy. Ah, did you ever have the the pleasure of seeing them perform live? I never did. I did once, and somebody else had mentioned. I was thinking, I saw, oh, I saw the Wallflowers as well. Um, but yeah, not a lot of not a lot of uh, success following that time period. But you know, nonetheless, so it goes. So it none goes. The, none the richer. So. So what's new with you? Well, we're back from spring break this week. Um, kind of a damper at the end there. KU lost on Sunday in the second round of the tournament. And so. then Wichita the day after. Yeah. Well, we actually, um, my wife and I made the drive to St. Louis on Sunday to watch KU play and saw them lose. And uh. actually, Wichita State game was immediately following their game, so we got to see that oh, yeah. game as well. Right afterwards. So we saw, uh, we saw both the Kansas teams battle. Rumble. It was a uh, it was a rough it was a rough day trip with about ten hours of car time. So you know that's the risk you take. That's the madness. It is. If you will. It is. But well, let's move on to some brighter things. Please. Would you like Ed, to start tonight? Ed Actually, Tech Tools. Yeah, I'll start tonight. I'll good. start tonight. All right, so first tool I got is one I reviewed the other day for the website, and it's called, can you see that? Education Bin? Bean. Bean. Oh, there you Let go. Me try and, I'm trying to log out so I can get back to this home page. There we go. Bean. Bean Clever. is a very nice way to organize a collection of websites. And so you see at the bottom of my screen here, well now I'm logged out and it's not lighting up, but there's a bean. And basically you can go around to different websites you'd like to share with your students and add them to your bean pod. 
and then you can share that with the students. So it's an easy way to share a collection of links. But they've also got this awesome feature here called Surf Together, which if your kids are on computers or on tablets or mobile devices, you can actually they can you can surf the web with them. And so it's like you're taking them to these different sites and maybe you're talking about them or showing them different things, but then it's like, you know, they have to sort of be on the same site as you and and they can surf the web with you. Plus it's got an awesome feature where you can comment on the different sites. So like you could post a question about different sites and maybe outside of the classroom the kids are taking a tour of the websites you posted and then they're commenting or answering the question that you posted. And so it, you can add a little more functionality to websites, make them a little more interactive, have a dialogue online based on these different websites. And it's just a really great way to put a bunch of websites together and serve the web with some more interactivity. And it's free. And you get this Chrome plugin, so it, it makes it a lot easier. Or Firefox or uh, Internet Explorer if, if yeah. that's your if that's your poison. Um, but great tool and completely free. Awesome. Well, let me piggyback off that, if you will. I will. And uh, as we approach the last quarter at my middle school, we are beginning a research uh, a research project, and you're talking about you know collecting these sites and having them available and sharing them with your your kids and having them, you know, you really like to narrow down to help guide them towards the stuff that will be most useful to them. Um, but I we are beginning a research paper, a research essay in my in my class, and just you know getting in that mode of finding what sites will work best, databases that they can access. I came across this site here called Instagrok. Are you able to see the page? Yeah. Yep, got it. Okay. Um, so basically it's uh, an interactive concept map, like it says here on the page, and you customize it. You can share it with your class. They can. There's already a, um, a database of the ones within uh, the site itself, and you know, depending on what your topic is for the research paper, the research project that you're doing, you can go in and get a lot of good resources that you can use. For example, uh, going with the song we played earlier, Little Hip Hop, I thought that would be my subject to look up. So if I grok the subject of hip hop, it comes up with this little uh, concept map that I can just... Uh, you know, scroll over and I see uh, just, you know, here is in the middle my topic of hip hop and along the edges are, you know, culture, the Bronx where it may have started, rap, the movement of hip hop, artists, etc. And then along with that, there's your key facts, which you can scroll through. There's tons of those that are uh, links that you can click on to go to the sites for more information. There's the source, which is a very valuable tool, especially when, you know, I'm really emphasizing the correct citation of where the sources come from, um, you know, so just having that available so they can input that later or just keep a record of it for their actual essay. But then there's also, there's uh, other websites you can go to on the site or uh, on the subject. There's videos you can look at. We have images, other concepts that are related, and then notes over this topic. Now what's really I think helpful for that and I haven't thought too much about this but it almost seems possible that I could just through the site itself the kids could create the research essay on it because they have this journal page where you know you can copy and paste the information that you found uh, back on the concept map and put it on here you can pin items, you have a bibliography running over here so you're typing your, what you want and then maybe adding a graphic, et cetera, and you could type it all there. Uh, I haven't really used this this part of it, uh, so I don't know how extensive the documenting can be on this page, but you know, it's obviously a good start for someone who's wanting to uh, combine all of the information that they've gone through. And as a teacher, you can, you know, there's quizzes that are already created that might help them kind of uh, if you want to just 
have some kind of assessment of, you know, if you're just doing this in class for a day and have a topic that you want them to go over, you can assess them just really in a quick and easy way, and that's created there for you. Um, really cool. I watched, there's a couple of videos on the homepage of the site of examples of other teachers using it in their classroom. Looks really easy to use, very helpful, so I am very curious on uh, or just excited about having Instagram to use at this time of the year in my LA class. Yeah, that's really nice. Uh, in the beginning you were talking about how important it is to narrow things down for the students and I completely agree. We focus a lot on research techniques and strategies. Just the enormity of the web, like when we were when computers were first there in the class, we had, you know, Encarta, and we had the, like, digital encyclopedia, yeah. and, and that was it. And now it's it's immeasurable how much information is on the, on the web now. And so, especially for younger students who are just learning how to find information, being able to narrow it down like that is helpful. And you also mentioned sources. Have you ever used easybib.com? Um... Not that exact site, but something similar to it. Um, and really, the way I taught it last year was uh, I'm trying to think of this. Is it Son of Son of Citation Machine or Citation Machine something? That basically where I just entered the uh, you know it's just it's it is it's a citation generator where they plug in all the information and then it it reads it out to them with all the the, the exact MLA format. So um, saving a lot of time and just having the kids learn how to do that because even you know when I was taking my grad classes over a year ago that's what I would use for mine because it would you know trying to do it on my own I would make mistakes here and there but it generates it easy so I'm guessing is EasyBib kind of the same EasyBib's the same and I yeah. love it and we're doing that right now we're talking about citations but yeah. Just wanted to throw that in there. And we'll sit down all the links, as always, after the show's over, of course, to everybody watching from home. Um, but, yeah, Instagram, very nice. I like it, and I like how it, it sets you up right away with something, so then you can build from that, which is nice, especially for kids maybe having trouble getting started or yeah. thinking of main ideas. That's a nice way to jump right in. Well, with... with Especially middle school kids, like I teach, their their research, you know, they might kind of have an idea of what they want to talk about, and then the concept map might give them a little more, you know, that let them they might find a strand of something they they're into that will help them flesh out their paper. So you know, spark some ideas, there some, some new connections. Yeah, that's great. I love that. That's yeah. awesome. All right, very man. nice. All right, next up over here. Um, I did a. We got iPads this year for the teachers at the school. Uh oh, wrong one to share. Nice. So we got iPads, and every month I lead a a professional development session, introducing them to some new apps and new ideas. Introducing the teachers to some new apps and new ideas. And this week we talked about QR codes and augmented reality. Have you ever used QR codes, or have you seen Erasma, or used any type of Augmented reality ever? Um, I, we've used QR codes. Actually, our school librarian, or our, I should say, our district, our district librarian, who kind of oversees the all of the libraries in our in our district, is did a lot with QR codes at the beginning of the year. And I've read about I've read about Erasma and this AR. I'm, it's kind of foreign to me still, but um, yeah, I'm familiar. At least. I'll do my best at explaining. QR codes, for those unfamiliar, are these things. Basically, they're a visual link, and you can scan them with your phone or tablet, and this will take you to a web page or a video or whatever information you'd like to link to. It's like a link. What Orasma and augmented reality do, imagine you're looking through your phone at an image or at a scene, and your phone is overlaying more information. Maybe that's a map of how to get to somewhere. Maybe that's a video about the historical importance of the neighborhood you're in or something like that. It's it's taking what the camera is seeing and it's adding more to it. Does that make sense? Yes. And I'll send out some yeah, some really links. Cool. 
also afterwards. It is really, really awesome. So what Orasma does is, if you think of it like a QR code, but instead of a barcode like this, it works based off a picture you take. And so you can take a picture and have that picture link to a video or more information um, or an animation. Here's a little video. I don't know how well it's going to work through the podcast, but so here's, he's got a picture of Despicable Me, then he puts the phone over it, and Erasma recognizes it and pulls up the, the little animation of the minion there. So it's, and if you move your phone and you move your camera, it, it tracks where you're at, so you can turn your camera and the animation will turn with it, and and so it's, it's like it's embedded in within the phone. So here he is looking at the bus stop and then a video pops up over that image. So it's basically taking an image and and making it more interactive. They say their motto is like connecting the physical world to the digital world. It's letting you embed additional information, usually videos, within a picture. So like an example, one the history teacher at our school is is having the students print out who they think the their the most influential person in history is, and they're going to make a collage on the wall, and then oh. you hold your phone over the picture, and a video pops up of the student explaining why they think that person is the most influential and what evidence they have to support that and stuff like that. That is... I don't know. I'm trying to think of like a futuristic movie reference that I can. It just seems like something like out of Back to the Future Two or something. I'm just like it's really cool. That's and really cool, and I think uh, it's 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 kind of a difficult concept to to grasp, you know? Because I I I know when I read about it at first, I kind of had to like you know stop and be like, okay, what exactly? How is, does this work? How does it work? And Especially without seeing it. It's hard to explain yeah. just in words or in text. But one of the examples in the, the video is you're at a museum and you hold your phone up over a painting and the painting sort of comes to life and talks about the artist who painted it and the history and the period of the time. And, you know, and so it's like an actor dressed as the character in the painting but coming to life and explaining more information about the painting. Wow. Yeah, it's it's cool. And it's, especially when you see little kids, like, seeing it for the first time, <laughs> and they're just, you know, the reaction is, they're hooked. It's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. So anyway, that's Erasma. It's free. All their stuff's free. And you can use, the other cool thing is you can use other people. So if someone's created one based on a certain picture or whatever, as long as you're following them, then it works on your device as also. So it's it's completely open. Anything anyone's created, you can also use because it's all uploaded to their servers. Wow. Yeah. All right. I'm kind of speechless. Pretty I'm trying to like trying to think of a way to apply it. Like <laughs> that would just be so cool. And and I think yeah, the the like having kids see it for the first time would just be. Yeah. Really cool. For English, our English teacher is having them do book reviews. So then, when you hold the camera over the book, over the cover of the book, then the kid would pop up giving like a review <sighs> of their or their reaction to the book or their review of the book or or something like that. Wow. Wheels are turning. I'm Wheels thinking. are turning. I'm thinking. I got nine weeks left. I can do. I can do this. All right. Throw it in there. Back All to right. Me. What do you got? Well, I not as uh, not as groundbreaking as that, but we have something called Study Blue. Have you heard of Study Blue? It. I was looking at earlier when you sent the link, and I I feel like I've heard of it, but I haven't used it in a while or looked at it. In a while. Okay. Uh, well, let me the 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 content I was going to show is more from a like a. a the teacher guide that I was given when I when I signed up for, but I will just quickly go to their homepage if it will come up. Uh, sign out here. 
But essentially, it's just a, a site to uh, for a teacher to compile their study materials for their class, and the student can access it's. It kind of sells itself on having the digital flashcards that um, I, I think you know kids have access to for different sites. They can do that, but it's more. Uh, it, this site has more of just you know all of the. Um, you know, lecture notes or uh, PowerPoint type things that, that you can keep all together in one group for uh, a, a student to go in and check to see what they may have missed or need to review or study more for the actual class. So I'll go back to the uh, go to this little slide share here, um, and it is it's it's a good way for teachers and students to collaborate over the materials as well. Um, like I mentioned, you, they can create the flashcards to go along uh, with vocab words or just concepts that kids need to know. Uh, but it's just a study tool to help you know, make things easier for the kid. It's really easy to get signed up and to have. It's, it's, the site looks really cool and nice, so I think that's kind of attractive to kids, maybe more so than like a Quizlet or something. Uh, but it's it's very interactive, and you know it's it's easy to add your classes, and and a school can have you know like a whole department, like my seven my eighth grade colleague and my you know with my seventh grade classes, we could kind of collaborate and have a shared, uh, I guess class group that you know kids get access from year to year. So uh, it's it seems really easy to use and uh, easy for the students to get on, and they would have. Uh, their materials right there for them wherever they are on their phone, on an iPad, on their computer at home, that they would be able to uh, access materials whenever they can't say that they left their notebook at home. You know, it is all there for them to access in one nice, easy place. So, Study Blue, it's free. Um, that's nice. I like yeah. that. Not really reinventing the wheel for a lot of apps and sites that we've talked about before, but I think it's just uh, and it, it's a way that you can also and this is something I was I was kind of confused because they were really strict on you know avoiding you know copyright or plagiarism type things with you know adding content to the library that you start, but I think as long as you you know, give credit where credit's due. You can add other written pieces by other people, which obviously a lot of teachers would do. You know, to add to their materials for their notes, for their study, for the kids to study. So, um, yeah, I think you can easily access other materials to add to your own. So, um, very extensive library that you could go to for that as well. So, there's all the lots of different uh, subject areas that they've already had. You know that you can have access to as a teacher. So nice, yeah, that's a great resource. I like you said, not crazy life changing, but very yeah. simple, very efficient, good resource to have for the classroom. I think a lot of sites are just you know kind of taking things we've seen before, but you know maybe just adding another element to it or another you know maybe having that you know like Quizlet I mentioned you know that they will have. A database of all the flashcard sets that other people have added in, but you know that's kind of their niche is just the flashcard sets. But you know this site, you can have the full documents of you know something you might be studying, or you know another paper, or you know some kind of graphic that you can all add together. So it's it's kind of building on what has come before it. So pretty yeah, cool. Was, yeah, very nice. All right, man. Well, that's all I got over here on my end. No, that's not true. What? You should, you should have one more little, one more little treat to send us out. Just some music, you mean? Yeah, that's what I. Oh, okay. I was like, what, what, what tech tool am I forgetting? I have no idea. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks to everyone for listening. I had the pleasure of seeing this man without his band when he was in Kansas City last summer. He was on tour with St. Vincent. And it was awesome. 
but I've been in love with the Talking Heads ever since I was a, a little lad, and this has always been one of my favorite songs of theirs. Uh, they are great. So, I'll see you next week, Saul. So.